Hello and welcome to the Building a Bridge to Belonging and Rainbow Songlines podcast. My Yudindji sovereign citizen name is Jala Connolly, my birth name is Velvet Eldred and I was born in Tali on Gungay country and I live on Yudindji, Gimoy, Cairns country. My mum's from Ireland and my father is from England and they came here to Australia looking for a better life. I've always been a seeker and one day sitting up on the Dane Tree doing some ceremony and meditation work, I had the absolute knowing that I was only sitting on top of the country and I got the clear message that to belong to this country I had to be indigenised, I had to sink my bones into the dirt of the country. And in all ways led by spirit of the heart, I was then reintroduced to my beautiful friend Karen Rays. Karen Rays is an Aboriginal woman who engages Indigenous and non-Indigenous women through her seed healing program. The Rainbow Songline Workshops offers contemporary and cultural healing on country with her insight and wisdom. Karen, would you like to do the acknowledgement of country first? Sure, thank you, Velvet. I'd just like to acknowledge the traditional owners of country from where we're speaking from today, the Majanji people, and to pay my respects to both past, present and future custodians. I'd also like to acknowledge my ancestry, so I'm a proud descendant of the Gugu Yimidhir Nation, the Bajala, Dirubal and Western Yalanji people of Queensland. Uh, my connection to Cairns is through my great-grandparents. They were part of the stolen generation. That makes me five generations removed from country. Karen, the beautiful song that brought us in in the opening, it always touches my heart. Can you share with us the meanings of those beautiful words? Mm. So those words uh, come from the Google Yimidhir language. Um, I'm just going to sing them. So it's Nama Wonga Wawu Wawu Gurau Banbargu Wawu Gurau Banbargu I um, get a goosebump every single time. So the words, Karen, what, what are they about? So they mean to look inside the heart, soul and centre <sighs> with the intent of working towards feeling whole and complete, knowing that we're already whole and complete. Karen, would you mind sharing with us some of your backstory about who you are and how you came to be in this world? Mm, mm. Thank you. So firstly, I just want to say I'm really excited to talk to you today and as well to talk about the Rainbow Songline workshops. So just in terms of my background, mm. I'm a, a mother, a sister, an artist and an elder. I'm also the founder of SEED and SEED stands for Community Engagement and Education Development. Mm. So at SEED, I created the um, Rainbow Songlines program for women as well as the Dreamtime prayer flags. And I also offer a one-day cultural workshop, which is called Deep Listening on Country. Mm. So I've worked as an associate lecturer, delivering courses to Indigenous and non-Indigenous students at Mm. Curtin University. So they were courses in um, Indigenous community management and development, as well as Indigenous cultures and health and then um, last year I resigned as the head of wellbeing at an Indigenous girls boarding school and it really was an honour to be guided to work on country and work alongside young Indigenous women. Mm. So I hold a Bachelor of Fine Arts and a Grad Cert in Indigenous Healing Arts and art's been really important you know, in my journey of healing. So as an artist, yeah, I wanted to be able to share with others, you know, what it means to reclaim, um, you know, your inheritance as an Indigenous person. Mm, that's beautiful. So Karen, what inspired you to create the, the Rainbow Songlines workshops? So it was it was all about creating a program for women. So women who were wanting a soul connection and mm. also wanting to integrate Aboriginal spirituality into their practice. Mm. So I first um, started to offer the program a couple of years ago and, you know, the timing just seemed right. You know, it really did align with, you know, everything that was happening, I suppose, in the world at the time. Mm. Mm. We had the Black Lives Matter movement mm. and then we also had that, you know, the climate change for action mm. 
and as well, you know, at our Indigenous boarding school, it really um, created an opportunity for staff to look at our core business, mm -hmm. um, which led to, um, yeah, having First Nations people having a voice, you know, in the whole school community. Mm -hmm. um, on a personal level, though, the, um, what, what is it that came together in you that, that, that gave you that knowing that you had to create this workshop? Yeah, well, I think it actually came from another, uh, a number of different reasons. Mm. Um, so firstly, um, it was from a vision that I'd seen mm. and that vision was about um, a time in history that was going to be really important for Indigenous people to rise. And in that rising, they were going to share their, their knowledge and their wisdom to non-Indigenous people mm. and together they'd come back to mm. heal the land. Um, so one of the other things that, you know, inspired me to create the program was that I was given an opportunity to publish uh, a story mm. and, um, and I think it was really just the writing process that I enjoyed and it was through that writing process that then led me to create the Rainbow Song Lines. Mm. So Karen, I'd like to cycle back because I'm a bit fascinated about this story that you wrote. Could you give us a bit more insight into that story? Sure. So um, the story I wrote about really was about a tragic time in my mm. life. So there were two events that happened around the same time. And those events really led to an awakening mm. and the decision then to come back home to Cairns. So I've been back home now for eight years. Mm. But the story was called Love and Healing and it was published in 2019 in a book called Our Infinite Power to Heal. So the turning point, you know, for me in the story was really feeling heard for the first time. And the creative and reflective process really helped me to, to see and uncover my soul's purpose. So if it's okay, I'll just read, you know, yes, parts from the lovely. story. So the stillness had triggered an unforeseen journey towards healing that was calling me home to country, to my ancestral land, to heal and to be a healer. When I trust myself and face my fears, my voice gets stronger. I have this innate ability to listen deeply, to express myself uniquely and create a safe space for teaching and learning. And, and I realise, you know, through this writing process that, um, you know, this is my gift to the world. So I really wanted to create like a cultural arts healing program for women where they could, um, you know, come together in a safe and nurturing environment, you know, with the support of the community to honour our stories and to know that everyone has the capability to heal within with the right, you know, support and guidance. Mm -hmm. um, and I suppose in my offering to, you know, we'll come to learn that everyone has their own answers within mm -hmm. and that's the power of deep listening. Mm -hmm. And having done your workshops two years in a row, Karen, I certainly... Um, can attest that it was almost a soul crisis mm. for me that, that brought me back into your circulation and I kind of thought that, oh, you know, you'd be made just for me and I've mm. been through your workshops. Mm. And it also gave me this vision to do these podcasts because I so deeply believe in your work. Mm. I know you have some testimonials here from other mm. people that have done your workshops. Would you mind sharing those with us? Sure, I've got them here, yeah. Um, so Jennifer had said cultural healing gave me time, so like inverted commas, mm -hmm. me time, which enabled me to reflect on my life and my relationships and inspired me to go on my own journey. And I think what's really powerful about Jennifer's testimonial is that, you know, like as women and, and you know, mothers and carers, that we often find it, um, you know, really difficult or we can find, yes. <laughs> or we can... Um, you know, we're really guilty about, you know, making time for ourselves. Mm -hmm. So Cynthia had said that it was an insightful and creative cultural and spiritual journey of healing through Aboriginal knowledge and wisdom, experienced through art, song, dance, storytelling, meditation, sisterhood and trust. Mm -hmm. um, she also identified, you know, that lifelong friendships were created along the way. And then lastly, Susie said, my eyes, my understanding and my heart have all been opened I'm so very grateful to begin a journey of how to live on this land respectfully, 
honourably and in conjunction with the carers of this land. Mm, absolutely. Beautifully put. As an Aboriginal woman, what is it was in you that the the called you forward to share your wisdom about belonging to country with, with non-Indigenous women? Well, I think, um, firstly, I know that I was called home by the ancestors. Mm. And, you know, family is really important to me. And I think for me, you know, to be of service in the world mm. really is about educating people. Mm. So firstly, you know, educating them that, you know, we all have a place, that we all belong. Mm. And secondly, you know, that it's really important to understand the past so that we don't repeat it. And then, you know, the third one is, you know, just, um, I suppose, understanding that we all have the power within to heal ourselves with, the, mm. you know, the right support and guidance. Mm. Yeah, the kingdom of heaven lies inside sort of thing. Yeah. yeah. And I think the other thing too is that what we, we do in seed is um, we're really giving people their power back. Mm. So it, it's not about taking power away from people or making anyone feel wrong or guilty. Um, and, and the way we, we do it um, is through this power of deep listening. Mm. So can you share with us a bit more about deep listening? What, what's that? So the word for deep listening in um, Google Yimithia language is um, gurubi. Mm. And um, gurubi is the place that you go when you listen deeply. Mm. And Uncle Willie kind of all, has always said to me, you know, that it, it's when we make the time to listen deeply that we're actually um, planning or preparing for our future. Oh, that's beautiful. So who's Uncle Willie? Uncle Willie Gordon? Uncle Willie Gordon. Mm. Um well, firstly, he's my mentor yes. and he's my cultural advisor. Mm. And he's been um, such an important person in my life. Mm. Um, you know, in the way that he really um, accepted us for who we are. Mm. And, um, yeah, when we first came back home, he took us around country. And every time I call him, he's always there for me. Mm. Um, and it's really interesting, too, because... Um, it's a little bit scary in some ways because he'll um, ask me these questions and I'm thinking, oh, is there is there a right answer to this? And of course there isn't because mm. it's all about, you know, you, um, you finding your own path and finding mm. your own way. And I suppose just like we do in, you know, the workshops, mm. it's, it's about gu guiding and supporting people. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And I know what you mean about Uncle Willie because I remember when I first met him, he looked at me and he asked me, was I Indigenous? And I kind of laughed and panicked at the same time because, of course, I want to give Uncle Willie the right answer. And then he kind of just laughed at me and, and, and helped me out of a bit of a hole that I thought I'd gone into. So, darling man, if you get the chance to meet him. Yeah, yeah he's, he's beautiful, yeah. Mm. I'd just like to pick up on that point that um, you were sharing with us about, you know, that control and, and your own journey within your workshops because it was after that second workshop that I had a vision and I knew I'd work with you because I saw a rainbow and I'd built one half and you'd built the other and, and we'd met on the top. And um, so vision kind of pulled me forward to wanting to work further with you. Mm. Well, actually, that's really um, interesting. You know, you talk about a vision I think I first met you about six years ago. Yeah. Yeah, we were um, sitting in circle and um, you were facilitating the circle. And I remember like um, secretly wishing that um, we'd, we'd work together at mm -hmm. some, some stage. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, when you can see kind of, um, you know, your dream or vision unfold in front of you, it becomes mm -hmm. really exciting. Mm -hmm. And I think there was... Um, I think there's something else that gives, you know, our work a sense of hope too. Yes. Um, you know, your work is about building a bridge to belonging mm -hmm. and mine is about the rainbow song lines. Mm -hmm. And there was a vision, I, I don't know if I had it about 20 years ago, um, but there was a vision about a significant time in our history mm -hmm. when Indigenous people would rise. Mm -hmm. So maybe rise in a way, um, you know, that they hadn't done before. Mm -hmm. But it was about rising to share their um, wisdom and knowledge to non-Indigenous people mm -hmm. and together we'd come back to the land to heal. Mm -hmm. 
So, you know, when I think about, you know, Seed's vision, um, there's a number of things. Mm. So the first one, it's about growing and healing communities together because ideally I'd love to be able to travel across country and, mm. and work with other traditional owners. Um, the second thing, it is about building a bridge to two cultures. Mm. It's about, you know, building shared spaces, you know, that acknowledge one's self-worth and values um, the concept of unity. Mm. And then, of course, the third one is to make the world a better place and to save it for our children. Oh, yeah, that hits the heart. Mm. A future for our children, yeah. Mm. So they never, ever, ever, ever have to feel like they don't belong. Yeah, definitely, yeah. yeah. So the Rainbow Songlines are a wonderful opportunity to immerse yourself with Indigenous culture. What's next? When are the next workshops coming? Great. So um, the next workshops. So the booking details are going to be at the end of this podcast on the screen. Um, But just in terms of the program, the program is going to um, run over 10 weeks and it's going to be delivered on a fortnightly basis and we're going to be offering the programs in Cairns. Um, there's also another component which is the cultural camping retreat in Cooktown mm. and um, that's going to be with the amazing Uncle Willie. What you'll experience is a cultural healing mm. um, so people will engage in creative art activities mm. such as dancing, weaving, um, also creating their own symbols for healing and um, also working with clay um, to make a clay bird um, so that the, you know, the bird represents the self. Mm. Uh, also learn and experience about spiritual practices such as deep listening, you know, welcome to country, uh, smoking as well as guided meditations. So in all the package includes, you know, working with experienced facilitators. Mm. So we have Sue and, and Henry mm. from Gari Three Sisters. Mm. We have Pauline Lampton from Mirakai Performing mm. Arts. And again, you know, the amazing uncle Willie Gordon, yeah. uh, who's my, you know, cultural mentor and elder. Mm. And um, so the so there's ten workshops. It includes lunches, art materials, and then you know the camping retreat on country as well. So Karen, as always, it's such a delight to work with you. I think um, this is incredibly important work. It's about working with Indigenous people in a, a spiritual framework that you can have your own spirituality work with, um, but more in. Importantly, I think what you offer us is time, the time to really sit on country with people and discover, uh, you know, the possibility for friendship and walking together and that lovely way that we can actually build a bridge to belonging together. So thank you Mm. so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you, Velvet. And then we go around and then we go to the end. It's like a melody I've heard before. Yeah, it's like Lion King. <laughs> <laughs> isn't it? Isn't it? Oh, it does sound like Lion King. When he's like, Manama, or whatever. <laughs>